Are you ready to create 3D rotating shapes right here in After Effects? Perhaps you have a client that just wants something really cool and we're all about creating things that you know, really don't have a purpose, but just look awesome. So in this video, we're gonna talk about creating these 3D rotating shapes that can be used in the background of a title or logo, just really something that can be used to spruce up your composition incredibly quick. Hey, what's going on internet? This is Josh Noel, Sunduck Film. Drop a like on the video, it helps us out tremendously. So we're gonna talk about creating this background. Let's jump in, let's get started. And if you wanna follow along, you can download our project files for free, use it as a template. So we're gonna jump over to tutorial composition. We have a title in here and a background, doesn't really matter. First thing we're gonna do is we're gonna come here and grab the rectangle tool or any shape that you wanna grab. You grab it, click on the word fill, set that to none, click okay, click on the word stroke, set the solid color, click okay. We'll use a stroke with a three, and the color doesn't matter right now. So you're gonna draw out a rectangle, kind of like so, and make sure you control, double click the pan behind tool so that anchor point is right in the center. Now, before we do any fun stuff, we need to set the colors of this so it's easy to change later on. You know, your client's like, hey, I actually want this to be blue. Well, you don't wanna have to go through so many different layers to change that. So what we're gonna do is we'll grab our shape layer, we'll go to effect, generate, and we'll grab a gradient ramp. And then what we're gonna do is go to layer, new adjustment layer. And what we're gonna do is go to effect, expression controls, and grab a quick color control. And we'll go ahead and take this color and duplicate it. So we have two reds in here. And what we're gonna do is go to shape one, all click stopwatch for start of color, and all click it for end of color. And we'll just parent this to color one, and the second color to color two. And now we can change our colors here very easily. All right, so now that we're ready to go, we'll take our rectangle one layer, turn it into a 3D object, and also turn on motion blur for now. And then we'll hit P on keyboard for position, and we'll bring this forward, or actually back in Z space. I know that's a positive number, but that'll bring it back in Z space with a positive number. And then what we can do is take our rectangle and go to edit, duplicate. You will be duplicating a lot in this tutorial, so remember the shortcut. And we can randomly move this around our composition, adjust the Z position by a little bit, move it forward or back. And if you want, if you want it to be a little extra special, you can hit U twice on your keyboard, break the chain for size, and just adjust the size of this. If you want to do it, I'm actually not going to, but just a quick tip. And we'll go ahead and create several different copies of this in random positions, all facing us at this moment in time. So go ahead and adjust the Z position and go ahead and add a few of these in there. All right, so I've duplicated a few more rectangles here and just to show you that these are offset in 3D space. Here's what it looks like on a side view. But we need to take three dimensional to the next level. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab another rectangle here, just any one of them. And what I'm gonna do is hit R my keyboard for rotation and set the Y rotation to 90 degrees. And then I'll hit P on my keyboard for position and I'll go ahead and just move this around. And as before, I will create several more duplicates. And then with a few more duplicates of these rectangles in 90 degree Y space, we're gonna have a little bit more of a complex group of objects like this. So you can see how as this rotates, we're gonna get the side view. So it's a very bare bones look, um, but we'll go ahead and continue to spruce this up and make it look great. One thing I recommend to this 3D group is to add other custom objects. So perhaps we can create a complete square. And as before, you know, maybe we'll do effect generate fill as a gradient ramp and just do like a complete solid color that just stands out and we'll make that 3D object and randomly position this in our space here in Z space. And we'll create many different duplicates of this as well. So now we have these extra square shapes in here. I also added in uh, some random graphics from our motion graphics professionals pack, as you see here, just a still graphics. Uh, so now we have these random shapes in here. It looks a little bit messy, but now we're gonna take this to the next level and add creative effects to really make this pop. And quickly, before we move on, if you're looking to create awesome motion graphics that stand out within a click of a button, check out our 150 plus template pulse pack for After Effects. With our easy to use Atom X extension, all you have to do is find a graphic that you like and hit apply. Once it's on the timeline, you can easily customize colors and other parameters to fit your needs. You can check out the pulse pack and all the other packs we have off our website, sunduckfilm.com if you're looking to save time and produce awesome work. The link is in the description below. All right, so let's come into layer, new adjustment layer, and then we'll go to effect, stylize, grab the glow effect. We'll set the glow threshold to about 25% and the glow radius up to 220. We'll grab the glow effect, we'll duplicate it, and we'll set the glow radius to 350. And this will look even better in a few moments. So to make this better, we'll go to layer, new, camera, because we gotta control the 3D aspect of this scene. 
Make sure it's set to 50 millimeters, click OK. Then we're gonna go to layer new null object and I'm gonna take my null object, turn it into a 3D layer, hit P on keyboard for position and I'm going to move that null object in the middle of everything. So if you wanna get an idea of what that middle looks like, just look at some of your layers here and kind of see what the average is. So we can see that one of our layers is all the way back 712 and we have a forward one at 224. So somewhere in the middle of those two numbers uh, will be the kind of center where that null object needs to go. So then once that null object's in there, we can take our camera layer and parent it to the null. And at the beginning of our timeline, we'll hit R on keyboard for rotation, all of the stopwatch for Y rotation and type in time asterisk 15. And now we'll have a rotated scene like this and that's very smooth, um, but we need to make some more adjustments to this. And then we hit CR on keyboard to grab the camera movement tools Wait until you see this double line right here and we can kind of zoom in a little bit more because we want this to fill more of the composition. So by clicking and dragging in, we'll control the zoom of the scene here. Okay, now another thing I wanna do is control the blurriness of this camera. So what I'm gonna do is go to our camera one here and I'm gonna open up camera options and I'm gonna set our depth of field to on. I'm gonna come here to aperture and set this up to 2300. So it's gonna do a lot to our scene right off the bat. And then we'll come here to focus distance and try to find that perfect focus. So maybe this will be at 2300 as well, uh, but you're gonna have to either increase the focus distance or lower it. Um, I'm actually gonna bring the aperture back down to 600. I just wanna show you how dramatic that you can get with this out of focus look. So go ahead and just kinda adjust those parameters to fit the perfect spot where it should be out of focus. So as you can see, the objects that are closer to the camera tend to be more in focus while the, as they rotate outwards, they will be out of focus. So it's a really cool way to create that look. Now, of course, who doesn't like talking about some extra quick effects to help your scene even further? So what we can do is create another adjustment layer here and also added our title onto our scene so you can use this as a background um, or you can use it as a, some cool objects that you've created yourself. So to help spruce this up, we'll always add noise to this. Uh, I think it looks extra good when you have a glow effect to your overall comp. So we'll set this to 12% and uncheck use color noise. Then we'll come here to effect, distort, and we're gonna grab a quick optics compensation. We can reverse lens distortion and set this up to like 50. You don't really have to do this, just a idea. And then you can also go to effect, uh, stylize, and grab a quick CC vignette. They're gonna help darken out the edges a little bit. So overall, I think that just helps as a nice touch of creative effects to your scene. Now, if all these techniques combine together, we can have a really cool composition like this. All right, so now you can impress your client who's very difficult to communicate what they want. Just give them a 3D rotating background. It'll be fun. So hope you enjoyed this video. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. We post multiple post-production tutorials every single week. Hit us up on Instagram. We got tutorials on there as well. And always be creating.